There you go. Keep going. There you go. Keep going. There you go. So what's going on? So here's what we're doing today. I've got a old shredder. It's a, what they call a sidewinder shredder. What it does is it uses a tire in order to run the shredder. Well, the shredder hasn't been used in probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And uh, back then it just had some issues and they got parked and never used again. I have other shredders, so I started using them. But I need to take this to a place where uh, we have some rocks and so forth and some stumps that might get hit. I'll explain that in just a moment, but here we go. Let me show you what the shredder looks like. So if you look at if you look at this shredder, it's it's this is an oldie, but it uses a tire to drive it, and that's how this does. It does not use a gearbox. That's its gearbox, and so if you hit something with this shredder, it doesn't break a gearbox. It just spins under the tire. I've had this shredder for several years, many years now, and I've not used it in a long time. But it's time to put it to work. So we're gonna we're gonna fix some issues with it and get going here. Just hey, just 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 wrap it around the front so we can pick it up straight up. We're gonna pick it straight up in the air. I want to check all the blades and everything on it. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and lift it. Hold up. Sit down. All right, pull it out. Tilt the bucket. Pick it up. Tilt. Pick it up. Tilt. Good. Tilt it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Pick it up. Tilt. Tilt it. Now pick it up. There you go. Pick it straight up. So that's my concern right there. You see how much rust has hit this, but there's a huge, there's a really thick plate back up in here. That looks okay. Ah. In the The blades are pretty, uh, actually in pretty good shape considering all things. So let me show you what we're going to do here. This this bolt broke a long time ago, right here, but it's not it's not something I'm really all that worried about putting another bolt in it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld this piece to this piece. I don't know why they didn't do that anyways. There's nothing here that would create a problem. This whole thing's been around a long time, and she's not in the best of shape, but. We'll get it done. Now I just drive it over there and we'll start putting it together. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to clamp this together. We'll clamp this together and then I'm just going to start beating, putting beads on it. I think I, I think I want to make it straighter though than that. Well, this bolt is crooked right here, right. so I, I'm pretty sure it's bent, and that's why it's. See, look. Like, oh, no, I mean, I can just hold it like that. Yeah, but I think we need to. If we get a get a clamp and then clamp it down, that should be work. That should be good. Let me see if I can. Uh, you got clamps over here, right? You'll break these. Yeah. Well, you could just should only need like two of them on the top and the bottom. 
I'm gonna see if I can get this one to go in here. That actually looks pretty good right there. That bottom. The bottom's like already tight. Tight, because it's just yeah, this bolt is crooked. <laughs> and that's so weird. Hey, look at this. This bolt right here is not even, all the threads have rusted off. Right. And so it literally is just on there as a spacer, basically. I think it is a spacer, actually. No, like all the, if you look inside, all the threads are broken. Okay. And then we can do the same thing on, well, probably won't even need to do the same thing on this one as much. So let me get you in here real quick. I'm gonna show you what's going on. So there's bolts in here, but the spacers have been missing for years. So this is this, this is not, not tight. We need a little bit of, we're gonna leave this little bit of tilt on here or slant in this thing. Uh, a lot of that has to do with how far up and down it goes. And I'm just gonna weld this, I'm gonna weld this together. Uh, it's probably done. Uh, like I said, the old machine has been around for a long time. It's got a lot of problems. Hopefully we can continue to use it for what we're gonna use it for. The stump jumper's in pretty bad shape, as you can see. Um, it, it's, it's just not part of anything here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll be okay. We'll take a look at that before we actually start using it. But we'll get in here behind this here real quick and we can Yeah, the stump jump the stump jumper looks good. This it's just this plate that's kind of rusted. The the steel behind it, this big thick or the thick piece of steel that this is all hooked to, and then this blade goes through it. That's all in good shape. Uh, it, it, yeah, I think you just you get it out there and get start using it. I think it'll be fine. Take a look at it. Hey, do you think on these spots here we could like put like plates in? Well, if we decide to keep the thing, maybe. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's just, I didn't mean to do it's that. Just, it's just tired. Put a hole in it. The, the machine is just tired. You know what I mean? Falling over over here. It's like, it's like, look, it's like any other old piece of equipment. Once they get tired, they get tired. And it's time to it's time to move on to something better or newer but i want to try to use this at least a few more times um tires are shot on it everything's shot on it that's why we're just going to weld this together and hope it holds together Okay, so the only thing the only thing we did here was weld one side of this so I can set it down. I'm gonna actually kind of clean this up before I weld any more of this, and then uh, then I'll finish welding it because it's got a lot of rust and stuff. Welds look pretty good though. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and clean this side first if you don't mind. Okay, and then I'll get in there and try to get that welded. All right. Get up inside there. Yeah, like that. Ground. 
you see the hit, hit, roll it. Hit this. There you go. So while this is in the air, I can show this a little bit better to you. This tire right here runs a plate that's underneath here, inside of here. And that tire runs on top of that plate. You can see it better, you can see it better right up in here. And that tire runs on that plate and spins the blades. And if we hit something, then that blade will start spinning uh, or it will stop. And, and it will, sometimes I've had to smoke the tires before, but that, this is a, this is just a safe way of, of cutting fields that don't have, that may have a lot of, uh, stumps or something like that, uh, in them. It's better than a gearbox because with a gearbox, you're most likely to strip the gearbox out or break a gear or something like that. This just slips. Yeah. We could bust blades up and, and other things like that, but it's still, it's, it's a pretty cool design. I don't know if they even make this type of anymore. Alrighty, well, we ran into a little bit of a problem, but it's nothing we can't fix. So, we hooked up the shredder, and uh, this draw bar here, it will turn. And since it turns, and this type of shredder is set up for a straight draw bar, this right here also will turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bracket right here, and we're gonna weld it on there so that this thing can't turn and then that doesn't allow the shredder to fall and not pivot anymore because we're not able to turn with the shredder with it being the way it is. So let's get to it. Well, you look here, got it all welded in place. And now we've got it attached to the tractor itself. And you can see that this draw bar is not flipping anymore. But there is one other problem and it still has to do with the turning radius. And if you look right here, you see, we don't have much room before this draw bar actually hits and basically doesn't allow you to turn anymore. It essentially is, is jackknifing uh, just turning uh, sharp with the tractor. So we're trying to figure out a solution to make it so that we can turn. With All right, so what I was talking about. So we got the shredder all working 
and everything like that. But that is probably just about as tight as you can turn right now with it. You can't turn very much with it and it's because of that drawbar being straight, not a straight drawbar, makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, but that may be something we come back to in a different video. Um, we may just mention it, maybe another point, but we've got the shredder where we want it to, to be working. It cuts, cuts pretty good actually for sitting in the field for a while. And um, this is probably where we're gonna wrap up the video on this shredder, but we may come back in another video and revisit it at another date, but that may be it. It bounces a little bit for now. Hopefully we can get some of that out of it as we go along here. Something is tapping in it, but I can't figure out what it is. Alrighty, well, it's a little bit windy today, but we got the job done. And it was actually a nice day to be able to be out here and, and, and working on this, on this shredder. So we're gonna wrap up the video for today, but until next time, thanks for watching.